Welcome to Nuka Nights. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great time in the wasteland. If you want to support Nuka Nights, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel and activate all alerts. This helps the YouTube algorithm to spread the video and grow the channel. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't want my new Ultraset Terror Puppet to scare you. I can't believe it myself, but I was in London. And I met John Rush, the creative director of Fallout 76, for an interview. If you would have told me this about two weeks ago, I wouldn't have believed it. Bethesda Germany invited me to attend an exclusive Fallout 76 event in London. Thank you so much, Bethesda Germany team. After I got a temporary passport to travel to UK on Friday, I took a flight to London on Monday 11th November and met other interesting content creators and gaming journalists from Germany. On Tuesday we all together headed over to the Bethesda office and attended the Fallout 76 event. We saw an introduction to Gleaming Depth, met a ghoul, could try new features that we only could talk about after 19th December and met John Rush as well as Bill Lacoste personally. And as if that wasn't enough, we even had a roundtable session with John Rush, where I could ask all the questions that I had prepared to ask the developers. And now let's get to the interview. You can also read the full interview on nukanights.com. The article is linked in the description of this video. The interview is audio only, so I added some photos of the event. Thank you so much for this interview, John Rush, and thank you for your invite, Bethesda Germany team. Now check out the interview. I proposed my community several questions and they rated them and I chose the popular ones first. Uh -huh. So I will start with, since we received a nice new map expansion in Skyline Valley, we could imagine more map expansions in the forest, Toxic Valley and the mire, etc. Do you have plans about that already in that direction? So the great thing about Skyline Valley is how through expanding the map, through expanding the bounds of our Appalachia, we were able to tell more of the story of Appalachia. I always thought of that as the main character, but at the same time, giving players the agency to tell their own stories through camp building and exploring and adventuring and stuff. So a true expansion of the map. Um, so our players really loved that. We loved it too for what it gave us as developers. So doing more of that in the future, Absolutely. I mean, it's 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 been discussed what the concrete plans are. I couldn't couldn't really say, but uh, but the types of updates that give us the ability to do that and our players the ability to, to do the same are definitely are definitely what we're drawn to the most. Okay, I look forward to that. We love to use different loadouts and quickly switch them with the punch card machines. But would it be possible to? Add a kind of option to the Pip Boy to switch loadouts. Possibly, possibly. Is there, is there a reason they don't want to go to the punch card machine? <clears throat> well, it's easy if you have followed first, and then you mm -hmm. have the uh, survival tent. But if you don't, then uh, it might be a problem at some sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I'm having for the first, but so that's not a problem. But there are also some locations where it's uh, difficult to switch. And yeah, maybe it would be more um, convenient to yeah. switch in several situations or while in combat when you decide, okay, ammo is empty for this kind of gun, and but I have, for example, four rifles and but I have heavy guns with me and uh, power armor and I'll switch the build within the combat, mm -hmm. like that. It's certainly an interesting idea, I, you know, in, uh, in Gleaming Depths, so in between each encounter we've got a traversal space. Yes, yeah, I know. And in, in each traversal space we do have yeah. machines for folks that want to respect. I keeping, to. Yeah, keeping that in, in mind, folks yeah. that are going to want yeah. to do different play styles. Uh, making it that convenient with the point, possibly, I mean it would be worth worth discussing. I think it's an interesting idea. Yeah. The next thing is there are a lot of endgame players who sit on huge amounts of in-game currency like caps, gold bullion, stamps and perk coins. Would it be possible to add some kind of currency swap machines where players can exchange from one currency to another? Oh, like kind of like a 
Yeah, like an exchange machine. Yeah, for, what, per coins, for stamps, or whatever. Maybe. You know, a, good, a thing that those different currencies do is it encourages people to engage in the, in the content that the currency is tied to. Yeah. Um, so I would say if we ever did put something in that lets you exchange currency, it wouldn't be cheap. Like to the player, yeah. <laughs> you know, it happened really thinking. Do I really want to do that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, but uh, no, that that's also an interesting idea. Yeah. Okay, and I have another question about the trading. We do have a big part of the community that likes to trade rare items for other rare items, and currently the trading system doesn't allow us to trade one for the other item. Mm -hmm. We can just sell for caps. This leads to scamming. Mm -hmm. And I know people who maintain scammer lists and people have to check these lists if those should be a trade or not. And would it be possible to add a feature to swap items actually so that both players can choose one item to swap or two or whatever and there will be a confirmation screen that both have to confirm and after that it gets transferred? Yeah, we've, we've discussed that a bit too. Uh, yeah. What the specific plans for it though, I can't really reveal, but to, to the point you're making, well, the way I see it is we're in a wasteland and we're going to want to trade stuff. Here's 10 cigarettes for a magazine, or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and to me, that just feels kind of fun uh, being able to trade. Players kind of making their own currencies in a way instead yeah. of just relying on cash. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, we've, we've had discussions about that. We recognize that too. That's a good question. Okay. So we're getting four star legendary items in the raid. Mm -hmm. And we also saw some armor above level 50 for a short time on the PTS. Mm -hmm. It was reverted then to level 50 again. Mm -hmm. Will we get even five star legendaries one day or level 60, level 70, level 70 armor or, or weapons or something like that? Possibly. Uh, I would say if there are more events challenging as raids that come out mm -hmm. um, that maybe get harder and harder, people are going to need better and better gear. So yeah. if five star fits that, then that would certainly be on the table. Interesting. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> About older events. We have a lot of older events that pop up daily in public events and stuff. Do you plan to add new rewards to these old events or add new stages to these old events or something to make them more appealing again? Yes. Very good. <laughs> I've got a big whiteboard in my office with every event listed on there. That's great. Uh, and uh, yes, the answer is yes. Very good. I got several questions about PlayStation stability. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people have uh, very much problems with uh, crashes, CE errors, etc. And I do not experience this on Xbox or PC. Well, sometimes it does crash. I switched to PC. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Months. Yeah. PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. People complain so much about this PlayStation. Do you have uh, some kind of team that checks out these platform issues? We do. Uh, we, we've actually looked into that uh, fairly recently, and there was a fix that went out. And I believe there is another one in the works. Okay. But yeah, there was. Uh, they caught something on the on the PlayStation's that was a bit different than the Xbox. Mm -hmm. Okay. So something else. There are very rare items like the tattered field jacket or camo forest jumpsuit, etc. Are there plans, on those are in the game since release, mm -hmm. so are there plans to add more, maybe in the future of ultra rare items, maybe in Skyland Valley or new areas? Yep. I love the idea of ultra rare items. Yeah. Um, so yes, absolutely there is. Um, and uh, not only just adding them, but kind of intertwining them in, in new features that we yeah. haven't even announced yet. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I do love the idea of having those. Uh, our players, um, you know, they're really into prestige, right? And it's it's like, hey, look at the things I have, or look at the camp I built. And yeah. You go to somebody's camp, and they're showing you everything, throwing free stuff down at your feet. And so people that have those those really rare items, they love to show them off, rightfully so. They're hard to get. 
So yes. I do love the idea of that, yeah. And it doesn't even have to just be items. It can be player titles, right? Player titles are a big, big deal. Like you look at a game, other games that have player titles. People people, people love collecting those titles. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of different avenues to explore <laughs> uh, where players can express that sort of prestige for having collected that, that rare thing. Yeah, okay. Do you have plans for more public events in Skull and Valley or other events? There are just those board events now and basically neurological warfare and one event. So are there plans for more already? Yeah, we do have plans. Um, one thing that we're trying to be really conscious of is not putting out a new feature and 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 stopping development or support on it down the road. Yeah. I think you know one thing that we learned from making Skyline Valley is, you know, evolving something, like even evolving the big map is, is really appealing to players and to us too. So dialing in a bit further into like some of the smaller areas and fleshing those out more, it's absolutely, yeah, we, we talk about that all the time. Yeah, great. Yeah. Would it be possible to add patch dates to the community calendar? Oh, so action dates when we can mm. see when the season ends and we have to estimate those dates and yeah. mostly they are kind of correct but we never know until it's confirmed. So yeah, we we have talked about ways to more clearly communicate how much time is left in a season. Yeah. Uh, so that there's not that kind of confusion. Uh, so we we have had talks about it. The thing with seasons and the thing, the thing about working on our game is, uh, despite best intentions, being able to get these improvements in, it's a really slow moving ship. There's so many moving parts uh, with this game that to yeah. try to get something in really quick will normally just break <laughs> everything else. So we have to take very slow measured steps to get these things in. But yes, okay. we have talked about that. Okay. What about double mutated events? We have mm. mutated events already, and we have those double mutations in uh, daily operations. And what about public events, double mutated? Mm -hmm. We've talked about that too. Are so, you reading my mind? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So the last questions are um, someone asked if it could be possible to buy Atomic Shop items for friends to, to give them. To gift them a Tom Shop item, for instance. Would it be possible at least? Maybe being able to trade atomic shop items could open up the door to a lot of unintended <laughs> <laughs> No, not not trading. Uh, well oh, just buy to, to buy them, them for mm -hmm. some kind of gamer tag like Gotcha. When uh, you send something from Amazon to some other address like <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I think that could be kind of fun. I don't think that that's something we had discussed too much. I yeah. remember it coming up in the past a bit. Um, probably the reason why conversations ended there was for the technical lift that that would require. But uh, I could see that being, I could see that being pretty fun. I'll, I'll bring that up again. Yeah, yeah that's cool. A lot of people were confused about best builds at first. So when the vendors weren't usable. And we discussed that also, and uh, a lot of players. Maybe it's maybe it would be better if this best builds would actually work on active camps, mm -hmm. so not this kind of ghost camp mm -hmm. where so that you, when you see someone playing and you want to give them a vote for his camp, and you like his camp, then you can actually interact with this player and buy from his vendor and give him a vote, all right, mm -hmm. and. That's not possible currently because mm -hmm. they just pop up randomly somewhere. Would that be an idea or possibly? So with best builds, the best builds that we've released now, we actually have a lot of big plans for best builds uh, as an ever evolving feature. So okay. what we've done now is kind of like a really solid first step, kind of laying the technical groundwork okay. uh, for it. And actually one cool thing I saw was when Best Builds first came out, you'd see a lot of camps popping up like, oh look, it's the toilet camp. <laughs> yeah. you know? But over time, now you're seeing really quality camps kind of uh, popping up more and more, like really cool camps uh, from yeah. Best Builds. So from what, I've, what we've seen, you know, the intent 
is 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 working. It's like the groundwork is there. The plans we have for that feature down the road are going to make it very very robust, um, and things like that have been discussed and taken into consideration. But yeah. it's nothing I can talk about in too much detail now. But we'll enjoy talking about down the road once we have. Or maybe maybe the players can decide if they want to have an active camp to vote for. Oh sure. Or so that the other system that we have already mm -hmm. stays in and also they can opt in, for example. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it would be an idea. But that's all my questions. Okay. Thank I you. I love your video, sir. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see you. Wow. Did you just hear that? He loves my videos. Thank you again, Mr. Rush, and keep up the great work on Fallout 76. That's all for this video. Make sure to check out nukanights.com. You will find all ongoing and upcoming events, current daily ops, new codes, current season progress, articles about the latest event rewards and topics, as well as some tools like an interactive action points calculator. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.